Jay's going to introduce himself. Uh, he is a specialist at the Department of Agriculture, and his job involves supervising the crews that are out in the field eliminating spotted, spotted lanternflies around the state. And when we arrived here today, we got something that wasn't that surprising, but there are spotted lanternfly nymphs on the trees around us. So I'm going to remind you now, just in case we forget at the end, check your car before you leave to make sure that you don't take them with you, especially if you don't have them at your home or your workplace. Uh, and we'll remind you again at the end, but no further ado, Jay is going to demonstrate a spotted lanternfly circle trap, which is we found to be the most effective method of uh, capturing them as they hatch on your trees. Good morning, everyone. My name is Jay Lasevich. I'm with the Pennsylvania Department of Agriculture. Um, as Shannon said, we're here to talk about circle traps that uh, have been developed with our research teams over the past couple of years. Uh, previously, you may recall, we had been using uh, sticky bands. Uh, we discovered with the circle traps, uh, this is actually a modified pecan weevil trap. Um, and the idea is that as the lanternfly climb up the tree, um, they will get captured inside of the circle trap. So this is a much more effective trap. Um, it's safer for other animals, um, so they're not getting captured in there as well. So the, we have two, two examples for you here today. Um, this is a purchased circle trap. Uh, which I'll be demonstrating how to put up on the tree. Um, we'll eventually put a bag on there, and that's what captures the lanternfly. But everything that you need to, to build one, um, you can actually do yourself. Uh, everything is just purchased from a local hardware store. The general items that you need are um, some wire screening. Um, that's for the, the major part of it. You need two pieces of wood. We cut some tops off of some plastic jugs. These will actually get attached together with some duct tape. Um, which is what you'll need there, and a Ziploc bag and a zip tie. We've got two, but you only need one. Um, and really, that's all there is to it. You're going to assemble it using, again, the duct tape, the hot glue gun, um, a stapler, or you can use um, a heavy-duty stapler, and you will need one of these for actually putting the trap up. So again, one of the reasons why this trap works is because as the lanternfly, in their young stages, right now they are nymphs. They just hatched um, within the past week or two, essentially. Um, so they're very small. Um, they haven't developed their wings yet. That won't happen until July. And what happens is they will climb up the tree to, to feed on the new, new growth um, all the way up at the tops of the trees. Um, a breeze will come along or they'll get tired. They'll fall off the tree and then they'll climb back up the tree. They'll do this multiple times a day, and this is why this trap is so effective, because as they're climbing up the tree, they're getting caught in the trap, and then that's, that's where we capture them and die. So uh, let's go ahead and, and we'll do an example of how to install one of these. Um, and there are nymphs on this tree. Yes. Yeah, this time of year, if you're looking for spotted lanternfly, you're going to find them on small vines and new shoots of trees. Um, probably can't see it, but there's some poison ivy right around the back of this tree, and they love that. Um, anything with a, a thin, small bark is what they're good at, at getting into. They have a piercing mouthpiece. Essentially, they just stab into the, the thin parts of the trees, and they're able to take up any sap that's inside, and that's what they feed on. So essentially what you're going to do, you'll have, again, the two, this is about 18 inches, this is about 11 inches. You're going to use the longer piece. It's going to go right like that, and we're just going to staple it roughly vertically at the top and again near the bottom. And then from here we're just going to take and tighten this around the side of the tree. So what we've essentially done is we've now created a barrier here. Um, you can use a clothes hanger wire to help you out here. This is just to get you a little more space, so some room. The idea is, again, as the bugs are crawling up, they're going to get onto this mesh, which is going to feed them up through here into this funnel. From there, we're just going to use a regular bag. Um, Ziploc bags work great, um, or if, if you have a bag like this, I'm just going to put this right over the top. And there we go. So what you'll do is every two to three weeks, um, you want to come out and you will just remove this bag, just take the zip tie off, tie it off, 
make sure you throw it away somewhere safe. You know it's going to get disposed of properly. Um, and then replace the bag with a new bag and you're ready to go for the entire season. Spotted lanternfly continue, even in the adult stage when they do have their wings, um, they will continue to climb up trees. They are not really great flyers. They can jump, but um, they're still going to climb up the tree to get up to that thinner bark up at the top of the tree. So with that, I guess we'll start with questions. Exactly. Yeah, this, this creates a barrier so as they're climbing up, um, they, they really can't get underneath it. They're going to climb right over top and then that'll force them because they have nowhere to go once they're inside this mesh to go but up into that bag. Um, one of the things to watch out for, so we've got, I, I covered it, let me, let me open this up really quick. If you have re reusable zip ties, they are your best friend. Um, we have a, a small lip on the top, so if you can create that if you're making your own. And the idea there is, is that as this bag hangs over top of it, even with, you know, if rain's coming down or anything like that, that funnel is going to keep that bag open um, so that they can crawl in and fall in. Um, the, the plastic is actually a very slippery plastic, so it's difficult for them to grab, so they generally can't get back out. So the original method that was um, very effective for capturing the spotted lantern flies, we found also captured some things we didn't want to capture. Correct. Pollinators like bees and butterflies, because they would fly into it. Right. And that's the, the point of the, the flexible screen wire around that keeps, keeps it from trapping things like small birds. Exactly. Whatever's gonna fly into your tree, right. a bat things that we are helpful. Yeah, and, and sticky bands are still effective, um, what we, and they are still out there. So we're still encouraging you to use them if you have them, but we do suggest, um, again, you can use this mesh to, if you use your sticky band, to just put a little flap over top of it so that the bugs can get in, but you're not gonna trap anything else. So you're essentially putting the sticky band on, wrapping the plastic down over top. So they'll climb up in, they'll get stuck to it, they can't get off, but nothing else is gonna get stuck in there. And we're still seeing lots of old information online. You know, you, you search for something online, you find the old information and use that method. And then you're heartbroken when you capture a bluebird or something in the, the sticky band. So we want people to use the currently most effective method and just put a barrier there so that you don't capture things you don't want. Do you want to talk a little bit about uh, what you can use in conjunction with a circle trap on your property so that you don't, what you can use safely so that you don't, uh, you know, inadvertently poison something else or right. harm or kill your beneficial plants. Right. Um, so definitely there are, um, there are a lot of companies we work with. Um, you can visit our partners at Penn State. They have a whole list on their website of different um, products that are available to utilize for, for that are labeled specifically for lanternfly. Um, and the idea there is, is that if you have a large number of them, this is great for early detection. Um, if you're in, a, in an area where you don't have a lot of lanternfly yet, this is a great way to find them and capture them. But it's also an effective way of, of getting rid of a lot of them at the same time. But again, if you have a lot, um, there are pesticides that are available that you can use that are safe um, for safe to kill lanternfly, but are limited for other insects. One thing that we want to remind everyone of is to is that people, everyday people, are what spreads the insect. It doesn't right. walk or fly very far on its own. We take it new places, and you can see that when you look at the map of the quarantined counties and then the areas where the insect has spread, it gets there along transportation corridors, mm -hmm. like roads and <laughs> The, play, the ways that humans travel, it hops on your car. So we want to remind everyone to look at your vehicle carefully before you leave. Absolutely. It's much easier to, to see them later in the summer when they're adult insects and when they're brightly colored. Right now, they're very hard to see. Mm -hmm. they're, can you tell us how big they are, Jay? So right now, they're about the size of a tick. Um, so they're very small. Uh, they're black with white spots, and they'll, they'll be in that stage for another month or so. 
Um, and then later on, they will get a little bit larger each time. So essentially they double in size, but like I said, right now they're very tiny. Um, unless you know what to look for, they are hard to see. Um, as they grow, um, the adults will get to about an inch long, but pretty much at any stage they are able to hold on to vehicles moving in excess of 65 miles an hour. Um, and it's not like they're clinging to your windshield like you're used to seeing them. They'll cling onto the bottom sides in your wheel wells. Um, if you have a roof rack, they can attach onto there somewhere. And what they'll do is as soon as you stop somewhere, they'll hop off and, and now they're, they're somewhere new. All, ways to get around that would be to uh, be careful about where you park number one so if you're um, try not to park under trees if you can particularly if you know that there's lantern fly in the area um, make sure it's it's hot right now but um, if you can please keep your windows up uh, when you park your vehicle that way they're not getting inside the vehicle and then again then they don't even need to hang on when you're traveling at whatever speed you're at um, and also one of the concerns come fall would be if you're parking under trees um, anywhere that the adults are laying egg masses, that they could lay an egg mass on your vehicle, on your campers, anything that you're going to be transporting to and from either a quarantine area into a non-quarantine area, vice versa. Um, so you want to be very careful about that and inspect your vehicle every time, uh, both for right now for the, the new egg, or I'm sorry, right now for the newly hatched spotted lanternfly, and again in the fall for egg masses. There will be a press release on our website with some more background on spotted lanternfly and details of what's happening now. The insects are, according to our population models, I don't think you mentioned that, about 50% hatched in this region. Correct. Um, they will hatch in the next few days in the Allegheny Range and in the, the little pockets in the northern tier where they have not yet hatched. So keep your eye out on your property. Mm -hmm. Make sure that you stump, scrape, and squish them. If, <laughs> there's no, if you find egg masses that haven't hatched yet, you can still scrape them off. But as they're hatching, be vigilant on your property. They're, anyone who's, uh, li who lives where they are infested um, knows what an incredible nuisance they are and we love our grapes and hops and our <laughs> our agricultural products that feed so much into our economy in pennsylvania so with that if there are no further questions oh still questions correct So there, there are some, there are products out there, including a chemical, uh, it's a naturally occurring fungus called Bavaria bassiana um, that is available as a, as a product that you can purchase at your local home improvement store, and it is effective on uh, lanternfly. Uh, we're still, we're continuing to work with Penn State and our other researchers to continue to expand the types of products that we can utilize um, that include, you know, more bio-friendly options like the Bavaria bassiana. Um, so, but research is still ongoing for that. Can you explain the term to us? This is a great question. Integrated pest management. Absolutely. Um, if you're in the industry, you'll see IPM. In fact, the name of the company where uh, Jay ordered the pest trap or the uh, circle trap online has IPM in the name. Yeah. So, integrated pest management is essentially anything any number of items that you're using to control a population of, of insects or, or whatever pest that you're trying to control. Um, in this case, the circle trap would be just one of the many tools that we utilize. Um, for the Department of Agriculture, uh, we, utilize, we, we utilize circle traps every day out in the field. Um, we're also utilizing uh, insecticide sprays um, and uh, tree treatments, so we're doing systemic treatments on trees so that when lanternfly are feeding on the trees they in, inject that pesticide and then they'll die from it. Um, so integrated pest management kind of encompasses all those many different things. So. Um, in a single trap, in a, in a single day, you could probably catch 500 to 1,000. Um, until we've it, it depends on the area you're in, but you know this. We've we've got these bags where they're 100% full of lanternfly. Um, so now that's not going to be everywhere, and it depends on where you're at. And that's why you want to make 
make sure that you're checking that trap if you're going to put them up on your property. Um, check it, you know, early on, maybe once a week, uh, maybe twice a week. We, we generally service our traps every two weeks with the department just to see how many we've captured. So. We've, we've seen photos mm -hmm. uh, of uh, a tree that, and this was in, integrated pest management, so right. two methods. The tree was injected with an herbicide for, or a systemic insecticide that goes right. throughout the tree um, to poison any insects that are missed by the trap. But with wheelbarrows full of the dead insects, later on the adult insects that are so large, uh, later in the summer, and that's in the really heavily infested areas of the state, which some of you are from. Uh, mm -hmm. In this area, we have little pockets Correct. of populations. Apparently, <laughs> as we're finding out today, this is a pocket of, pocket of population. Now, this right. area has been treated, but every time someone brings in a new pregnant adult female later in the summer, that means new babies in an right. area. So it's an on, it's a work in progress, right. and it's. Uh, we have to use multiple means of controlling them, and we really need right. everyone to do their part to control spotted lanternflies on their own property. Yeah, yeah I'll, I'll reiterate that. Every, um, everything that the Pennsylvania Department of Agriculture and USDA and the United States Department of Agriculture are doing um, are all as effective, but we definitely need the help of everyone in Pennsylvania. Um, circle traps on every tree would be a wonderful thing to capture as many as we possibly can. Um, so we just, we're, we're asking for your help to continue to, when you see them, you know, put up a trap, kill as many as you can, report them um, using any of our tools online um, and continue to help us fight this insect.